Okay, in this video, we're gonna cover how a motorcycle transmission works. We'll go through all the parts. I have it disassembled on the bench here, and we'll just see how it works. Now, a motorcycle transmission is a constant mesh, meaning the gears are always meshed together, and it's also sequential transmission. So that means in order, if you're in first gear and you wanna to get to fourth, you gotta go first, second, third, fourth. Okay, unlike a car, you can go straight from first to fourth if you want. Okay, so I'm working on a CB750, and that is a perfect engine or transmission to demo for you guys because all of it can remain in the bottom half, and we can shift it through the gears, and I can run it with a drill and whatnot and, and show you how that all works. Okay, so here's a look at the whole transmission, and the top case is off, and it allows us to look inside and see this thing work. Also, I'm going to be spinning this thing with a drill because it always helps when you have a little RPM in all these shafts to make shifts. Okay. Now, this, is, this case is split horizontally. Normally, with vertical split cases like dirt bikes and stuff like that, um, you're not going to be able to do this because once you put the case halves together, you can't see all the gears. So that's why... I thought it was a good opportunity to do it. Okay, so here's the main shaft. Below it is the counter shaft, which I'll show you after I take this all out. Here are the three shift forks, and the shift drum is down here. And here is just the output shaft. Okay, so let's do a top view of this thing running. All right. Um, and as always, when you're bench shifting, you actually have to shift it pretty hard to get it to jam into the next gear. All right. So let's go ahead and let me get set up here. Okay, so this is neutral. There's always a little bit of drag in the system. But okay, that's neutral. If I go down, there we go. Now we're in first gear. There we go. We're in first gear. Second, third, fourth, and fifth. And you can see this thing is spinning way fast in fifth gear. And back to neutral. Okay, let's start by looking at it all the way by the shifter. Now what I did is I rotated the shifter from horizontal to vertical just so we can move this and it'll be out of the way of this whole mechanism. So basically what you're doing with your foot is you are rotating this shaft which ultimately goes into a back and forth motion and it spins this drum. Okay, so in this whole mechanism, you're going to see a lot of uh, rotational motion transferring to uh, linear motion and back and forth. Okay, just to get the gears to slide back and forth. Anyway, so you can see here, as you push this back and forth, there are pins in here. Okay, so there's little teeth on here. It grabs the pin and it'll rotate this shift drum. Okay, so like that. See how that rotates? And this wheel here sits in between two pins. So I can take a screwdriver and rotate this guy. See how this guy rotates up and down? So right there, it's falling into two pins it's resting and it kind of locks it into a position, which would be a gear. Okay, so if we go the other way, for neutral, this, this little wheel sits here. That's a detent. But if we go this way, you can see it falls in between those two pins. So if we go to second, third, see how that wheel rides up the wheel and then back in. Okay, and this is fifth, and that's it. Okay, so that's really important to keep it in gear. Okay, so this version has pins, but you can also have a plate here that looks like a star, and the wheel will just rest in these divots, okay? But in any case, there's always some kind of detent mechanism that's not really located inside the transmission. You don't have to split the cases. It's either on the left or the right hand side of the bike. Okay, I removed the top gear set which was the main shaft and down here is the counter shaft and here is this shift drum. 
So this is the guy that gets rotated by the um, gear shift lever. Ultimately, this is what you're spinning. And you can see these weird grooves in here. There's three of them for three shift forks. Here are the three shift forks. Let me go ahead and remove one and I'll show you how it works. So on the shift fork, there's a pin. Okay, the pin goes in this groove. And as you rotate the shift fork, the shift drum moves this guy side to side. See how that's moving right there? This basically translates this way. Okay, this guy here accepts a gear. Okay, so see how we rotate this and all of a sudden you are rotating a gear back and forth. See that? So when you do that is you're taking this gear which has dogs, which are these round guys, and these dogs poke into the neighboring gear slots. There's slots in here. And basically right now it's freewheeling, but if I were to slide it over and get it engaged, now these are coupled. Okay, and that's how it shifts gears. So you see three pins, there are three shift forks. That's very common on five and six speed transmissions. Um, there'll be two on one shaft and the other fork will be on the other shaft. So on this counter shaft, there's a shift fork that goes here and here. So there are two gears that slide. And on the main shaft, there's only one. And that's how you get a five or six speed gearbox. I have the main shaft here on the bench and basically uh, you can see how this gear slides and these dogs go to a neighboring gear and they either go in slots or in between these pegs i don't know what these are called but these dogs would you know when you're shit when you shift you're moving the shift fork which will slam the gear one way or another and then it'll lock a different size gear to provide a different gear ratio